Hi guys, it's Mr. Politics, Mark Zick. We also know as Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zick. We have Space Command and many other things. Uh, and I'm going to talk right now about the Supreme Court. But first, there was one other thought I had about my last two videos, what I've been talking about. And here's the thing. I talked about Trump as a gangster. And I talk, talk, talked about this whole Stop the Steal movement and how that's a lie that's being uh, perpetuated to fool uh, Trump's followers. So here, here's how it gets even more egregious. Uh, Roger Stone is a true, I was going to say Batman criminal. He is, he is such a bad guy that he has a tattoo of Richard Nixon on his back. This is absolutely true. And he is a dirty trickster from way back. So he's the one who originated the Stop the Steal campaign because they knew that Republicans are going to have an uphill climb getting elected. So they have to, you know, steal the vote as much as they possibly can. But the way they operate, if you ever watch Trump, notice that he accuses the other side of doing what he's doing and denies what he's doing. OK, it's really interesting to watch. So they knew that probably Biden was going to win. So they started this campaign a long time ago. The only problem was, of course, that Roger Stone got convicted of criminal activity and put in prison. So what does Trump do? Trump pardons him so he can come out of prison and run the Stop the Steal campaign. And so that's, you know, so again, when you think about gangster activities or running the presidency like a mafia don, you know, getting one of your guys out of prison so that you can uh, have him run one of your scams, very clever. I mean, mafia dons don't have the power to pardon, but they, you know, they bribe people and, and so forth. But the point is, the result is still the same. So, okay. So now we get to judges. We've won the Senate back narrowly. We've got the House back and the presidency. So here's what we can do about the Supreme Court. Now, again, having lived a long time, I remember a time when if someone was a president, they put up their um, Supreme Court nominee, the Republicans or the Democrats, whichever side was on the other side, would approve that person. It was, it was generally conceded that the president had the right to choose his justice. The only exception was Robert Bork, who at the time was considered way, way, way uh, on the extreme fringes of the right wing. Now he'd kind of be, you know, much more accepted by the right wing. But, um, but he was shot down. Uh, but he still had his hearing. And, and the president still got to nominate another um, person, and that person got approved. That all changed when Obama put up Merrick Garland and Mitch McConnell didn't even allow hearings, didn't even allow a vote. This was way out of line and claiming, of course, that the people should decide, even though it was almost a year away from the election. And then, of course, it all, they all proved that they were full of shit when the shoe was on the other foot. They were just lying, you know, creeps and, and total hypocrites. So, okay, so now we have this bizarre situation where the Republicans have managed to get three of their guys put in uh, under the Obama and Trump uh, regimes by playing dirty, by changing the, the rules of the game, and by um, having totally, having absolutely no honor at all. So, what do we do? How do we fix it? Now, um, you know, there's been talk of hacking the court, increasing the number of justices. FDR tried to do that back in the Depression, it did not work. And again, because the problem is who's going to be approving that ultimately and seeing, seeing whether it's constitutional, the Supreme Court, and they're not going to want the, the court packed. So what do you do? How do you fix this enormous imbalance? And uh, so here's my thought. John Roberts, when he presided over Trump's impeachment, he was the judge overseeing that trial with the Senate as the jurors. He totally, totally um, derogated his duty and his oath of office because rather than allowing evidence, rather than allowing witnesses, the clear goal was to have a show trial where Trump would be acquitted. And even though the jurors, some of these senators, said before the trial that they had already decided, and of course they should have been recused, having said that, and, and you know, John Roberts. The only reason you would ever have a trial with no witnesses and no um, evidence presented is if you wanted um, the outcome to be a very specific outcome where the person would get off. And so, so the result of this is that John Roberts clearly colluded with the Republican um, senators to make sure that Trump was not convicted, even though he had obviously committed a crime. 
uh, by shaking down the Ukrainians and many other things he was doing. So, so he's guilty, not only of colluding with the senators for the outcome of the trial, but he's very, very clearly in violation of his constitutional oath uh, in not allowing evidence or witnesses uh, to a trial and allowing the jurors to say beforehand what they've decided their verdict will be. He, he was uh, acting as a Republican uh, functionary rather than as the Supreme Court justice that he should have been acting as. And as a result of that, he's not only in violation of his oath, but he's also guilty of collusion and he's also guilty of obstruction of justice by stopping the witnesses and stopping the evidence from being heard. So, um, so I think that based on that, we could impeach him and throw him out because he's guilty of dereliction of duty. So this is my thought about it. I haven't heard anyone else mention this, but it's obvious to me. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a way to start to bring balance back to the court. And it, it's extreme, but on the other hand, uh, I think it's absolutely what should happen because John Roberts, um, you know, we, it was exactly like a Soviet show trial. It was basically, or, or any of these trials you get in, in um, dictatorships, where the, 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 uh, the trial is a sham and it's just to have a certain outcome that the, the, the exalted leader wants. And um, we must never, ever, ever see uh, an impeachment trial like that on either side. Democratic or Republican, and I, I, I still remember Nixon, and uh, you know, so, and by the way, just a little another side note, they keep talking about how a president cannot be tried for crimes. This is not a judicial decision. This was a memo from the just, from Nixon's Justice Department. It was basically an explanation of how Agnew could be charged with crimes that Nixon couldn't. It is not legal standing. It, 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 it has never been adjudicated, and so when they say that a president, a sitting president cannot be charged with crimes, that's based on a totally fictitious um, rule of law. And so again, I would, I would urge everyone to kind of, you know, wake up and smell the coffee or the roses, you know, or, or the Senate. But, um, but this is just another thing where it's become like, oh, the Justice Department does not have the final say over who, you know, what happens. They merely um, are advisory in that way. Ultimately, it's the ju judiciary that decides what is law. And uh, so anyway, that's some of it, guys. So we'll talk again soon, but um, amazing times. And uh, I think that, as, I, I've, as I've said before, I think the days ahead are going to be very uh, interesting, very exciting, and I'll be here with you. Take care. Make sure you subscribe to Mr. Sci-Fi and Mr. Politics. Bye.